Here's our different, here's our different readings that we've taken. Uh, basically to figure your BTU it is your enthalpy difference times 4.5 times CFM. That's all there is to it. Okay, so let's figure out what how many BTUs we're developing out of here. Let me get my calculator here. All right, our enthalpy, which is 20.6, 26.16. Let me get my calculator out. So we're going to go, we're going to clear that out. We're going to go 26.16 for the return. We're going to subtract this apply from it. 20.2. That equals 5.96. So my empathy difference is 5.96. So it's going to be times 4.5 times uh, CFM. We're going to use 1280. That's pretty close to what we had. I didn't write down the CFM, so I don't remember what it was now, but that was pretty close to what it was. Alright, so we're going to multiply all that together now. Let me clear this out again. Alright, so we're going to take 5.96 times 4.5 times 12.80 equals 34,329 34,329 BTUs now that is what this system is putting out right now now we have you want to be as close to what the tonnage is on your air conditioner in this case it's 36,000 BTUs uh, but you have to take into account a little bit for the weather um, it's a little cool today. It's probably about 60, 65 degrees outside. Um, so as long as we're within about 10%, we should be good to go. Uh, if you're way out, if you're way low, let's say this was 25,000 BTU, well then you want to start looking at what the problems may be. Uh, but with it being this close, I'm happy with that. I wouldn't do anything else to the system. I know the Freon charge is good. If it was low on Freon, this is going to be around 25,000 or so. And it's easy. Once you do this a few times, it's easy to say, easy to see. Uh, so kind of keep it within 10%. You should be okay. Uh, one thing you're going to see a lot of, some well not a lot of, but sometimes you're going to see, is that this number could be 38, 39,000 BTU. So it's showing it's pushing out too much. All right. The only way that, one of the main reasons that happens, if it was really high, is that your CFMs are too high. Alright, so I measured one today that was, my empathy difference was about the same. It's like 5.4.9, 5. Point, right around 5. But my CFM was uh, 1,700, 725. I think that's what it was. Let's uh, let's clear this out. Let me show you what happens if the CFM is too high. All right, we got uh, 5.96, 5.96, and 4.5 times. times now we'll just say we'll just say 1780. That's about where that CFM was today. Look at that. Yeah, that's way too high. All right, the the blower was going way too fast. All right, so I had to slow the blower down and had to readjust the charge, and uh, we got it pretty close. When it's going that fast, and you got that high BTU, uh, you're going to have a real hard time controlling humidity when it's when it's real high. Uh, it's just not going to work as efficiently. Uh, so we're going to try to keep it as close. 
But you know guys, this is very simple to do. It, maximum it takes you. I can do this in about 10 minutes. CFM reading everything. So you let the unit run for 10 minutes. Takes you 10 minutes to check it. I mean you're 20 minutes. I don't know how long y'all spend on uh, PMs or whatever. Most of the time you're there 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. Uh, I can I can do them in about 35 minutes, you know, checking everything. But then you got to clean them, and you know, if you pull blowers out and clean them or whatever y'all do, um, I typically don't pull blowers and clean coils and it, unless I see my CFM's off. Uh, but that's just me. But I'm more worried about what this is. All right, so. Uh, that's how you figure BTUs. Alright guys, again I just want to show you real quick what these look like once you plug them. I mean I think that looks very professional, it's very neat. They look like hose, but they're plugs. You can't. But that looks neat. I mean if you just took a piece of metal tape and ran across there, I think that looks a little sloppy. You know, there's the one for that one. And here's the little plugs that I put in there for my little static pressure tips. When you're drilling holes on here, you want to take this door off and make sure you're not drilling into a circuit board or transformer or something like that. Drill in an area that's you got plenty of room behind it. Let's not drill holes in something that's not supposed to have a hole in it. But anyways guys, thanks a lot for watching.